Hello, Alan Steady with the Managed Services team over here at Firewalls.com. In this video, we're going to be demonstrating how you can get started or walk through the setup wizard on a SonicWall firewall. So before we can begin, we're going to need to establish a couple of connections, one being to the LAN, which is our X0 interface on the SonicWall appliance. So I have a machine that's just directly connected to that. And then I also have my upstream gateway that's connected to the X1 interface. And by default on the LAN port, the X0, the SonicWall is pre-configured with DHCP. So as long as the machine that you have connected directly to that port is configured with DHCP on the network card, it's going to pool an IP address. The default IP to manage our SonicWall security appliance is 192.168.168.168. So if you have a static IP assignment, we're just going to need to make sure that you've assigned that network card and IP address within that slash 24 subnet. So for example, it could be 192.168.168.167 with a net mask of 255.255.255.0 and the default interface being the gateway, the 192.168.168.168. So once we have that set, we can just go ahead and open up a browser, any browser. And we're going to open up a tab. In my example, I'm just using Chrome. And we're going to point the browser to https colon slash slash 192.168.168.168. And you're going to be presented with a certificate warning, just letting you know that the connection is not private. We're going to receive this with any device that we're trying to access that has a self-signed certificate it is okay to go ahead and proceed past the certificate warning. In the Chrome example, we just select advanced and proceed to the user interface. So we'll log into the appliance. By default, the username is just admin and the password is password, all lowercase. This is going to direct us to the setup wizard. Okay, so here you can see we have a couple of different options. We can get started using the setup guide. Uh, we can also skip the setup guide and just go ahead and manually configure the sonic wall. For the sake of our video, we're going to go ahead and just step through this setup guide. Again, this is very basic. It's intended to basically just give us access to the internet. So as we can see here, there's just a, a little bit of an overview where we're basically just going to be configuring credentials or updating the default admin password as well as configuring the WAN interface. So by no means is this setup guide meant to be an end all. There are a number of additional configurations that are required and we will be stepping through those in individual videos. Else this video could turn into a few hours long. So to get started, we're just gonna go ahead and select next. We're just gonna go ahead and update our default admin password. As with any password, it's always a good idea to make this a nice strong password. So at least 10 characters, which would consist of letters, numbers, and some special characters. This is going to take us to our IP configuration. So in my example in our lab environment here, my upstream gateway is servicing DHCP. So if that's also true in your environment, you wouldn't need to do anything here. However, if your ISP is providing you with a static IP, we're just going to select this manual configuration. And this is going to allow us to input that those static IP details. So just our WAN IP, the subnet mask, and the default gateway, along with a couple of DNS servers. In the event you're unsure of what this configuration is, and if you're not pulling an IP address, and you have the WAN interface connected to your upstream gateway, it's possible that you do have a static IP. And you should just reach out to your internet service provider and ask them what your usable IP address is, what the net mask is, along with the gateway IP. And then they should also provide you with a couple of DNS servers. Just wanted to show you that here. I'm going to go ahead and go back and I'm going to have to reset that password. So let's go ahead and re-enter the password. Okay, so we're back here at our IP configuration. Again, I won't need to make any configuration changes here because I'm set up with a DHCP on our WAN and I can select next. Okay, so you can see now that this is just a basic summary and that the setup is actually complete or I should say setup wizard, the actual configuration or initial setup is far from complete. So again, this is just going to get us out to the internet. However, our internal LAN 
would still be set to that default 192.168.168 subnet. So we'll select done here and then I'll walk us through configuring the LAN interface. So here in the user interface, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here to network and we're here in our interfaces tab. So this can be accessed just under system and interfaces. And you can see that we have the X0 LAN interface. So we'll just go ahead and edit this interface. And this is where we can enter in our own LAN private IP subnet settings. So I'm just gonna go ahead and change this to 10.10.251.1. But if you have an existing environment or a firewall that you're basically just replacing, you'll want to repurpose whatever that internal LAN subnet gateway was. And that'll save you a little bit of hassle on trying to go around and maybe update any devices that are set with static IPs, such as printers, NAS devices, and servers. And in most cases, that's the appropriate way to do this. So if you're unsure of what your private LAN subnet settings are, you can look at the existing gateway to maybe obtain some of that information. Or if this is just a new setup, you can just create one. I would just always recommend that you do not set this to 192.168.0.1. And I'll scroll down here just a little bit so we can look at a couple of the management functions. So these are just different services that are hosted by the X0 interface. So in, in order for us to be able to log in to the web UI, we have to have HTTPS enabled. And ping just means that we're going to be able to ping the interface IP. So this 10.10.251.1. And you can see there's a couple of other options that are disabled by default, such as SSH and SNMP. So if we need CLI access on the X0 interface, we would just toggle this on. The same goes for SNMP. I'll leave these disabled for now and select OK. So we can see that the X0 IP address is changing. So it has redirected us to the new user interface IP. Seemed to just be taking a moment there to get us reconnected. And part of that has to do with my machine here obtaining that new IP address. So along with the interface that we just updated, it did update the DHCP server that's associated with it. And once we log in here, we'll take a look at that. So we're just going to go ahead and log back in. So here we can see the interface that we just updated. And if we come down here to DHCP server under system, so DHCP server, we can see the DHCP server lease scopes along with the current DHCP leases. So this is gonna show our current connection. This is that machine that we have just connected directly to the X0 interface. So moving back over here to the DHCP server lease scopes, going back to what we were talking about earlier with having any devices that are connected using static IPs, uh, we may need to adjust this lease range Currently, it's going to issue an IP address for the entire network subnet, so from 2 to 254, where we may want to tighten this up just a little bit. So we're only leasing IP addresses within a range that would not include any of our static assignments. So with a smaller network with not as many devices that need IP addresses, we can shorten this lease range. In my example, I'm just going to go ahead and let this assign IP addresses from 10.10.251.50 to 210.10.251.100. And we'll move over here to our DNS and Win Server tab. So if we have any internal DNS or an internal domain, we can input that information here. By default, it is going to inherit the DNS settings from our WAN interface. But if you do have your own internal domain and DNS servers, you can enter those in here. I just wanted to briefly touch on that before moving on. We will cover this in greater detail in a separate video. So I'm just going to go ahead and select OK here. And then the last thing that we'll look at within this video is our default firewall rule. So we'll jump over here to policy. And here under our rules and policies are our access rules. So this is what's permitting us to go to certain places. And we can adjust this matrix here to show us just the default LAN to WAN policies. So by default, this is going to create an allow all, meaning from any source on our LAN going to any destination on the WAN using any particular service, we're going to allow that. However, you always want to kind of consider what's necessary for your particular organization or needs. So the idea is that we allow everything that we need and we block everything else. With this sort of more purpose-driven policy building, it can significantly reduce our exposure that we commonly see from traffic that's using non-standard ports. And it's not uncommon at all for customers to come to us and engage us during configuration projects. 
and not have a full understanding or grasp of what's actually taking place on the network. So in some cases, what we will do is establish just some basic firewall rules for normal functions, such as email and web and various terminal services, DNS and NTP, just to name a few others. And then we use the catch-all to allow all the traffic so we're not prohibiting normal day-to-day -day functions. And then we can start to take a look at that allow all bucket and start to combine certain information such as services and destinations to then start to make some decisions on whether or not this traffic is legitimate and really start to harden the firewall. We'll be covering more of these topics in later videos. So that's it for now. I hope you found this video helpful. If so, be sure to give us a thumbs up below and be sure that you're subscribed to our YouTube channel so you're notified of future video releases and come and check us out at firewalls.com. It's www.firewalls.com. Thanks for watching.